a 32-year-old female, is brought to the emergency department for a suicide attempt by overdose. She is admitted to a locked psychiatric unit and on the exam, she is intensely agitated and writhing in pain. She's crying and sweating profusely. Her vital signs show a temperature of 37.8 or 100 Fahrenheit, a blood pressure of 160 over 100, a heart rate of 105, and a respiratory rate of 15 breaths per minute. Her skin is cooling clammy with prominent piloerection. Pupils are 8 millimeters and equal. Which detail of the patient's history best correlates with her current condition? Is it a a history of alcohol dependence, b. A history of seizure disorder, c. Imipramine overdose, or d. Naloxone administration. The correct answer is d. The patient received naloxone in the emergency department. So opiate withdrawal causes piloerection, cool clammy skin, and midriasis resulting from an intense hyperadrenergic state. Naloxone is a strong MU opiate antagonist and can induce a withdrawal state in opiate-dependent individuals. Why is the duration of symptoms important with psychosis? The time frame is important because given the exact same symptoms, a patient is given one of three different diagnoses based only on their duration. Less than one month is acute psychotic disorder. One to six months is schizophrenia form disorder. List the positive symptoms of schizophrenia. Delusions. Bizarre behavior. Hallucinations. And thought disorder, such as tangential and clanging. Positive symptoms are symptoms that occur in addition to normal behavior. Normal individuals do not exhibit these symptoms. Positive symptoms respond well to all currently used antipsychotics. List the negative symptoms of schizophrenia. Anhedonia elogia. Volition or apathy. And sociology negative symptoms or symptoms for which patients have lost some form of normal behavior. They have lost behaviors that normal individuals typically have. Negative symptoms respond poorly to traditional antipsychotics. What features of schizophrenia suggest a poor prognosis? Poor premorbid functioning, which is most important factor. Family history of schizophrenia. Early onset. Negative symptoms. No precipitating factors. Poor support system. And single, divorced or widowed status. What features suggest a good prognosis? Good premorbid functioning, which is the most important factor. Family history of mood disorders. Late onset positive symptoms. Obvious precipitating factors. Good support system. And married status. What is the difference in age of onset for schizophrenia in males and females? The typical age of onset is 15 to 25 years for males. And 25 to 35 years for females. True or false, roughly 1% of the population has schizophrenia in almost every country in the world. The answer is true. Roughly 1% of the population has schizophrenia in almost every country in the world. True or false, in the United States, most schizophrenic people are born in the summer months. The answer is false. Most schizophrenic patients in the United States are born in the winter, and the reason is unknown. Roughly what percentage of patients with schizophrenia commit suicide in the United States? Roughly 10% of patients with schizophrenia eventually commit suicide. And the past attempt is the best predictor of eventual success. True or false? Psychosocial treatment has been shown to improve outcomes in schizophrenia. The answer is true. Antipsychotic medications are the mainstay of therapy, but psychosocial treatment has been shown to improve outcomes. 
medications are needed first, but the best treatment, as in most psychiatric illnesses, is medications plus therapy. Differentiate among the classes of antipsychotic drugs. The prototype high potency drug is haloperidol. The atypical newer antipsychotic drugs are generally first line treatment and maintenance therapy due to reduced parametal side effects and efficacy with negative symptoms. The prototypical low potency drug is chlorpromazine. It has a low incidence of extra parametals and a high incidence of autonomic side effects. Works well for patients with positive symptoms and works poorly for those with negative symptoms. What are the four commonly tested extra parametal side effects of antipsychotics? 1. Acute dystonia. 2. Akathisia. 3. Parkinsonism. And 4. Tardive dyskinesia. Define acute dystonia. How is it treated? Acute dystonia is an extra parametal movement disorder that occurs in the first few hours or days of treatment. Patients develop prolonged muscle spasms or stiffness, such as torticollis, tongue protrusions, and twisting sustained deviation of the head and eyes. Acute dystonia is most common in young men. Treat with antihistamines such as diphenhydramine or anticholinergic drugs such as benztropine or trihexafenadyl. Define akathisia. Akathisia occurs in the first few days to weeks of treatment. The patient has a subjective feeling of restlessness and may pace constantly alternates, sitting and standing, and be unable to sit still. Beta blockers can be tried for treatment. Describe the relationship between antipsychotics and Parkinsonism. Parkinsonism is most common in older women who are treated with antihistamines such as diphenhydramine or anticholinergic agents such as benztropine or trihexafenadyl. By blocking dopamine receptors, the patient develops stiffness, cogwheel rigidity, a shuffling gait mask-like faces, and drooling. Define tardive dyskinesia. When does it occur? Tardive dyskinesia appears after years of treatment with antipsychotics. Most commonly, the patient develops painless perioral movements that include darting protruding movements of the tongue, chewing, grimacing, and puckering. There is no known treatment for tardive dyskinesia if you are asked to make a choice. When the patient develops tardive dyskinesia, Discontinue the current antipsychotic and consider switching to a second-generation agent, such as clozapine or risperidone anticholinergic medications, or decreasing the antipsychotic may initially worsen the tardive dyskinesia. What is neuroleptic malignant syndrome? How do you recognize and treat it? Neuroleptic malignant syndrome is a life-threatening condition that can occur at any time during antipsychotic treatment. Patients classically develop lead pipe rigidity, tachycardia, profuse diaphoresis, mutism, obtundation, agitation, a high fever of up to 107 degrees Fahrenheit, very high levels of creatine phosphokinase more than four times the upper normal limit, sweating, and myoglobinuria. Treat first by discontinuing the antipsychotic, then give supportive care for fever and potential renal failure caused by myoglobinuria primarily intravenous fluids. Lastly, consider dantrolene, just as in malignant hypothermia, which is thought to be a similar condition. Describe the relationship between antipsychotics and prolactin levels. Dopamine blockade causes increases in prolactin levels because dopamine is a prolactin-inhibiting factor in the tuberoinfundibular tract of the brain. The end result may be high serum prolactin levels resulting in galacteria and impotence menstrual dysfunction and or decreased libido. What are the classic side effects of thioridazine and chlorpromazine? For thioridazine, it is retinal pigment deposits. For chlorpromazine, it is jaundice and photosensitivity. What are the side effects of the atypical antipsychotics? For olanzapine, it is weight gain, sedation, 
hypotension, and dry mouth. For quetiapine, it is sedation, orthostatic hypotension, akathisia, weight gain, and dry mouth. For zeprasidone, it is nausea, weakness, and mild cutie prolongation. For aripiprazole, it is headache, nausea, akathisia, tremor, and constipation. For paliperidone, it is Parkinsonism, dystonia, dyskinesia, akathisia, and cutie prolongation. For risperidone, it is increased prolactin and cutie prolongation. For clozapine, it is orthostatic hypotension, weight gain, metabolic syndrome, sedation, constipation, and agranulocytosis. Defined bipolar disorder. What are the classic symptoms? Mania is the only criterion required for the diagnosis of bipolar disorder, but a history of depression is classically present. Remember the mnemonic, dig fast for classic symptoms of mania, which include D, for distractibility. I, for insomnia. G, for grandiosity. F, for flight of ideas. A, for agitation. S, for sexual promiscuity. T. For talking with pressured speech. Look for initial onset between the ages of 16 and 30 years. How is bipolar disorder treated? Both lithium and valproic acid are mood stabilizers and first-line agents. Typical antipsychotics such as haloperidol, atypical antipsychotic, such as risperidone, quetiapine, clozapine, zeprasidone, and aripiprazole. Carbamazepine and gabapentin are second-line agents. Antipsychotics or antidepressants may be needed if the patient becomes psychotic or depressed. Use at the same time as mood stabilizer. What are the side effects of lithium, valproic acid, and carbamazepine? For lithium, it includes renal dysfunction in the form of diabetes insipidus, thyroid dysfunction, tremor, and central nervous system effects at toxic levels. For valproic acid, is liver dysfunction, tremor and gastrointestinal distress. For carbamazepine, it is bone marrow suppression, diplopia, ataxia, agranulocytosis, aplastic anemia, SIADH, and Stevens-Johnson syndrome. Define bipolar 2 disorder and cyclothymia. Bipolar II disorder is hypomania, which is mild mania without psychosis that does not cause occupational dysfunction, plus major depression. Cyclothymia involves at least two years of hypomania, alternating with depressed mood, but there are no full-blown episodes of mania or major depression. List the major risk factors for suicide. Age greater than 45 years prior. Psychiatric history. Alcohol or substance abuse. Depression. History of rage or violence. Recent loss or separation. Prior suicide attempts. Loss of health. Male gender. Unemployed or retired status. Single, widowed, or divorced status. Access to weapons. And an organized plan. What is the best predictor of future suicide? It is a past attempt. True or false? Be careful in asking about suicide because you may plant the idea in the patient's head. False, always ask a patient about suicidal thoughts. It does not make them more likely to commit suicide. If necessary, you should temporarily hospitalize an acutely suicidal patient against his or her will. True or false? When patients are just emerging from a deep depression, they are at an increased risk of suicide. True. When the antidepressant begins to work, the patient gets a little more energy, possibly just enough to carry out a suicide plan. True or false? The highest suicide rates are in people aged 15 to 24 years. False. 
suicide rates are rising most rapidly in 15 to 24 year olds, but the greatest absolute risk is in people older than 65 years. Define depression. Depression, or major depressive disorder as it is technically called, is defined by the DSM-5 as a depressed mood or a loss of interest or pleasure in daily activities for longer than two weeks. There is impaired function in social, occupational, or educational roles, and one must be either depressed mood or decreased interest or loss of pleasure. True or false? Patients with depression often do not complain about it directly. True. Patients often do not come out and say, I'm depressed. You must watch for the clues which include change in sleep habits and classically insomnia. Vague somatic complaints, anxiety, low energy or fatigue, change in appetite, classically a decreased appetite, poor concentration, psychomotor retardation, and or anhedonia, which is loss of pleasure. The history may or may not reveal obvious precipitating factors such as loss of loved ones, divorce or separation, unemployment or retirement, or chronic or debilitating disease. How do you treat depression? As with most psychiatric illnesses, the treatment of choice is both medications in the form of antidepressants and psychotherapy. The combination is more effective than medications alone. Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs, are usually the preferred first line agents. Other options include serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, or SNRIs, and the tricyclic antidepressants. Bupropion and mirtazapine have unique modes of action. Is depression more common in males or females? Depression is more common in females. What is an adjustment disorder with depressed mood? You must be able to differentiate adjustment disorder from severe depressive disorder in order to diagnose it. A patient encounters a typical life event, such as a breakup, a failing grade, or a job loss, but does not cope well with it. Over and above what might be anticipated from exposure to the stressor, there is obvious suffering. Although patients may have a depressed mood, they do not meet the criteria for full-blown major depressive disorder and symptoms do not last longer than six months. Define persistent depressive disorder, previously called dysthemia. Persistent depressive disorder is a depressed mood on most days for more than two years without episodes of major depression, mania, or hypomania or psychosis. True or false? Antidepressants can trigger mania or hypomania. True. Especially in bipolar patients. Remember to ask about any history of manic episodes when considering treatment for depression. How do SSRIs work? Why are they preferred over tricyclic antidepressants? SSRIs such as fluoxetine, citalopram, peroxetine, sertraline, fluvoxamine and acetylopram prevent reuptake of serotonin only. They have less serious side effects such as insomnia, anorexia, jitteriness, headache, and sexual dysfunction and are not dangerous with overdose compared to tricyclics. How do SNRIs work? SNRIs such as venlafaxine, duloxetine, and desvenlafaxine prevent reuptake of serotonin and norepinephrine. The side effects of SNRIs are similar to those of SSRIs, but also include noradrenergic symptoms such as sweating, dizziness, increased blood pressure, and sedation. How do tricyclic antidepressants work? What are their side effects? Tricyclic antidepressants such as nortriptyline and amitriptyline prevent reuptake of norepinephrine and serotonin. They also block alpha adrenergic receptors, so watch for orthostatic hypotension, dizziness, or falls. And they block muscarinic receptors, 
so watch for anticholinergic effects such as dry mouth, blurred vision, constipation, and urinary retention. They cause sedation, which is an antihistamine effect and lower the seizure threshold, especially bupropion, which technically is not a tricyclic. Tricyclic antidepressants are dangerous and overdose primarily because of cardiac arrhythmias, which may respond to bicarbonate. Remember the three C's of tricyclic antidepressant overdose. Coma, convulsions, and cardiooxicity. What are the monoamine oxidase, or MAO inhibitors? Describe their side effects. MAO inhibitors such as phenylzine and tranylcypromin are older medications that are not used as first-line agents for treatment of depression. They may be good for atypical depression. Look for hypersomnia and hyperplasia, the opposite of classic depression that fails to respond to other agents. When patients taking MAO inhibitors eat tyramine-containing foods, especially wine and cheese, they may get a hypertensive crisis. Do not give MAO inhibitors at the same time as SSRIs or meperidine. Severe reactions such as serotonin syndrome can occur, possibly leading to death. What is the most notorious side effect of trazodone? Priapism, which is persistent, painful erection in the absence of sexual desire that may lead to permanent impotence, if not treated. Distinguished between normal grief and pathologic grief. Initial grief after a loss, such as the death of a loved one, may include a state of shock, a feeling of numbness or bewilderment, distress, crying, sleep disturbances, decreased appetite, difficulty in concentrating, weight loss, and guilt including survivor guilt for up to one year. In other words, the same symptoms as depression. It is normal to have an illusion or hallucination about the deceased, but a normal grieving person knows that it is an illusion, whereas a depressed person believes that it is real. Intense yearning even years after the death and even searching for the deceased are normal feelings of worthlessness, psychomotor retardation, and suicidal ideation are not signs of normal grief. They are signs of depression. How do you recognize and treat panic disorder? Panic disorder classically affects 20 to 40 year old patients who have an abrupt surge of intense fear or discomfort that reaches its peak within a few minutes. Patients often think that they're dying or having a heart attack, although they're healthy and have a negative workup for organic disease. Remember the association between panic disorder and agoraphobia. The fear of leaving the house. Treat with SSRIs such as fluoxetine, which are favored over benzodiazepines. What is generalized anxiety disorder? How is it treated? Patients with generalized anxiety disorder worry about everything such as career, family, future relationships, and money at the same. Symptoms are not as dramatic as in panic disorder. The patient is simply a severe warrior. Patients have difficulty controlling their worries and can have restlessness, fatigue, difficulty concentrating, irritability, muscle tension, and sleep disturbances. Treat with cognitive behavioral therapy and medications such as SSRIs, especially if depressive symptoms coexist. They can also be treated with buspirone, an agonist of 5-hydroxytryptamine 1A serotonin receptor, which is non-addictive and non-sedating but has a slow onset of action. Give the classic examples of simple phobias. How are they treated? Classic examples of simple phobias include fear of needles, blood products, animals, and heights. Treat with behavioral therapy, including flooding, sudden intense exposure to the feared object without a chance for escape, systematic desensitization, a gradual increase in intensity and type of exposure until the person is comfortable with intensive exposure to the feared object, and biofeedback, which is learning to control autonomic variables like heart rate during anxiety-inducing maneuvers. What is social anxiety disorder? 
Social anxiety disorder, also known as social phobia, is a specific type of simple phobia, a fear of social situations that is best treated with behavioral therapy to reduce symptoms. Beta blockers may be used before a public appearance that cannot be avoided. And SSRIs are increasingly being used as a primary treatment. SNRIs and benzodiazepines may also be used. How do you recognize and treat post-traumatic stress disorder? Look for someone who has been through a life-threatening event, such as war, severe accident, or rape, repeatedly experiences the event through nightmares and flashbacks, and tries to avoid thinking about it. Patients can also have dissociative amnesia of the event, irritability, recklessness, or self-destructive behavior. Depression and poor concentration treat with peer group therapy. If you have to choose a medication, use an antidepressant, usually an SSRI. Note that post-traumatic stress disorder must have symptoms for longer than one month. Symptoms for less than one month indicate acute stress disorder. Explain the concept of somatic symptom disorders, previously called somatoform disorders. A patient with somatic symptom disorder experiences psychiatric stress and expresses it through physical symptoms. Patients do not do so on purpose. Describe the four major somatic symptom disorders. Somatization disorder. The patient has multiple different complaints in multiple different organ systems over many years and has had extensive workups in the past. Conversion disorder. The patient has an obvious precipitating factor, for example, a fight with a significant other then develops unexplainable neurologic symptoms such as blindness or stalking. Glove numbness. This is thought to be a physical manifestation of emotional distress. The patient is not malingering and truly believes the symptom is real. Symptomatology hypochondriasis. The patient continues to believe that he or she has a disease despite extensive negative workup. How are somatic symptom disorders treated? Treat all somatic symptom disorders with frequent return visits to the clinic and or psychotherapy. Screen for and treat any coexisting depression. Distinguish among somatic symptom disorders, fictitious disorders, and malingering. In somatic symptom disorders, the patient does not intentionally create symptoms. It is an unconscious process. In factitious disorders, patients intentionally create an illness or symptoms. For example, they inject insulin to create hypoglycemia and subject themselves to procedures in order to assume the role of a patient. There's no financial or other secondary gain. In malingering, patients intentionally create their illness for secondary gain. For example, money or release from work or jail. How do you recognize dissociative fugue? Also called psychogenic fugue or fugue state. Dissociative fugue is a reversible amnesia for personal identity, including memories, personality, and other identifying characteristics of individuality. It usually involves unplanned travel or wandering. There is complete amnesia for the fugue episode. The classic patient develops amnesia, travels, and assumes a new identity, but does not remember the event upon returning. What psychiatric disorder is most likely to be associated with childhood sexual abuse? Dissociative identity disorder, personally known as multiple personality disorder. Define personality disorders. Personality disorders are lifelong maladaptive traits that affect the way in which a person interacts with the world. Look for a history dating back to childhood or teenage years. No real treatment is available, although psychotherapy can be tried. Give a one or two sentence description of each of the following ten personality disorders. Cluster A. The odd disorders. Paranoid. 
patients are paranoid and think that everyone, friends too, are out to get them. They often initiate lawsuits. Schizoid Patients are classic loners who have no friends and no interest in having friends. They also have a restricted range of emotions. Schizotypal Patients have bizarre beliefs such as cults or superstition, and a bizarre manner of speaking, but no psychosis. Cluster B. The dramatic emotional or erratic disorders. Histrionic. Patients are overly dramatic attention-seeking and inappropriately seductive. They must be the center of attention. Narcissistic. Patients are egocentric, lack empathy, are often envious of others, or believe that others are envious of them and use others for their own gain. They have a sense of entitlement. Antisocial. The most frequently tested personality disorder patients have long criminal record, such as con artists and tortured animals, or set fires as children. Antisocial personality disorder. Has a strong association with alcoholism, drug abuse, and somatization disorder. Most of these patients are male. Borderline. Patients have unstable moods, behaviors, and relationships and self-image. Look for splitting, that is these patients identify other individuals as all good or all bad, and may frequently change categories. Cluster C. The anxious or feel fearful disorders. Avoidant. Patients have no friends, but want them. They avoid others out of fear of criticism and rejection. Dependent. Patients cannot be or do anything alone. Generally, they have low self-esteem. A wife may stay with her abusive husband despite continued abuse. Obsessive-compulsive. Patients are obsessed with rules, perfection, and organization. Money is a frequent concern and is often hoarded. Obsessive-compulsive disorder. Patients do not find these obsessions distressful. Define obsessive-compulsive disorder. How is it treated? Obsessive-compulsive disorder or OCD is marked by recurrent thoughts or impulses. Obsessions or recurrent behaviors, compulsions that cause dysfunction in the occupational or interpersonal life of affected individuals. Onset is usually in adolescence or early adulthood. Treat with SSRIs, especially fluvoxamine or with clomipramine. A serotonin-specific tricyclic antidepressant therapies such as cognitive behavioral therapy and flooding may be effective. True or false? Some psychiatric patients can be hospitalized against their will. True. Patients can be hospitalized against their will if they're a danger to themselves that is they're suicidal or unable to take care of themselves, or if they're a danger to others. Describe the hallmark findings of narcolepsy. How is it treated? Narcolepsy is a sleep disorder characterized by daytime sleepiness, in spite of a normal daily sleep regimen. Patients have decreased latency for rapid eye movement sleep. Patients go into rapid eye movement as soon as they fall asleep. They have sleep paralysis, which is paralysis upon awakening. Cataplexy which is random loss of muscle tone that causes patients to fall down, and hallucinations as they awaken or as they fall asleep. Patients may have a hypocretin deficiency, treat with modafinil, a non-amphetamine stimulant, or with methylphenidate or amphetamines. What is the difference between objective and subjective psychologic tests? Objective tests are generally multiple-choice tests that are scored by a computer. The classic example is the IQ test. Subjective tests have no right answers and are scored by the test giver. The classic example is the Rorschach test. Characterize each of the following psychologic tests as objective or subjective, and briefly describe its use. Rorschach test is a subjective test in which patients describe what they see in an ink blot. 
Thematic apperception test is a subjective test in which the patient describes what is going on in a cartoon drawing of people. Beck depression inventory is an objective test to look for depression. Minnesota multiphasic personality inventory is an objective test to measure personality type. Halsted Wrighton battery is an objective test used to determine the location and effects of specific brain lesions. Luria Nebraska Neuropsychological Battery is an objective test that assesses many cognitive functions as well as cerebral dominance that is left or right. True or false? Roughly 85% of cases of intellectual disabilities are mild. True. Patients with mild intellectual disability can have a reasonable level of independence with assistance or guidance during periods of stress. What are the common causes of intellectual disability? Although intellectual disability is usually idiopathic, look for fetal alcohol syndrome, the leading preventable cause of intellectual disability, Down syndrome, the leading overall cause of intellectual disability, and fragile X syndrome in males. How do you recognize autism spectrum disorder? Autism symptoms start at a very young age, beginning as early as six months, and becoming well established by two or three years. Look for impaired social interaction, which is isolative or unaware of surroundings, impaired, verbal and nonverbal communication, such as strange words, babbling or repetition, and restricted activities and interests such as headbanging or strange movements. Most individuals with autism manifest some degree of intellectual disability that is typically moderate in severity. No single cause has been identified for the development of autism. What is a learning disorder? Learning disorders describe isolated impairment in math, reading, writing, speech, language, or coordination. All other skills are normal. No intellectual disability is present. Define conduct disorder. With what adult disorder is it associated? Conduct disorder is a pediatric form of antisocial personality disorder. Look for fire setting, cruelty to animals, lying, stealing, and or fighting. As adults, Patients often have antisocial disorder. Note, evidence of conduct disorder as a child is required for a diagnosis of antisocial personality disorder in adults. Define attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or ADHD. As the name implies, patients are hyperactive and have short attention spans. ADHD is more common in males than in females. Look for a fidgety child who is impulsive and cannot pay attention, but is not cruel. Treat with stimulants which have a paradoxical calming effect, such as methylate and amphetamine or atomoxetine. Stimulants and amphetamines may cause insomnia, abdominal pain, anorexia, weight loss, and growth suppression. Atomoxetine is an SNRI and alternative to stimulant therapy, but it has serious potential side effects including cardiovascular events and suicidal thoughts. Describe the behavior of a child who has oppositional defiant disorder. The child displays negative, hostile, and defiant behavior toward authority figures. For example, parents or teachers, he or she exhibits such behavior around adults, but behaves normally around peers and is not a cruel lying criminal unlike patients with conduct disorder. Give the classic description of children with separation anxiety disorder. Effective children refuse to go to school because they think that something will happen to them or their parents if they separate. They will do anything to avoid separation, including fainting, stomach ache, headache, or throwing temper tantrums. How do you recognize anorexia? 
The classic patient is a female adolescent who is a good athlete or student with a perfectionistic personality, according to the DSM-5. The criteria for the diagnosis are restriction of energy intake leading to a significant low body weight, intense fear of gaining weight, or becoming fat and disturbance in the way one's body weight or shape is experienced. Roughly 10 to 15 percent of patients die from complications of starvation or coexisting bulimia, electrolyte imbalances, cardiac arrhythmias, and infections. Although more positive therapies are preferred, patients sometimes need to be hospitalized against their will for intravenous nutrition. Define bulimia. What are the classic findings of the mouth and fingers? Bulimic patients have binge eating episodes during which they feel a lack of control and then engage in purging behavior such as vomiting, laxatives, exercise, or fasting. Those affected are typically normal weight or overweight adolescent females. If these patients ever meet criteria for anorexia, they are diagnosed with the binge purge type of anorexia, that is the anorexia diagnosis trumps the bulimia diagnosis. Patients may require hospitalization for electrolyte disturbances. Classic findings include eroded tooth enamel caused by frequent vomiting and eroded skin over the knuckles from putting the fingers into the throat. Describe Tourette syndrome. How is it treated? Tourette syndrome is a motor tic disorder such as eye blinking, grunting, throat clearing, grimacing, barking, or shoulder shrugging that is exacerbated by stress and remits during activity or sleep. Although part of the classic description of Tourette syndrome, coprolalia or swearing affects only 10 to 30 percent of patients. Males are affected more often than females. Tourette syndrome can be caused or unmasked by the use of stimulants for presumed ADHD antipsychotics such as haloperidol, or dopamine receptor blockers such as fufenazine or pimazide can be used if the symptoms are severe. Tourette syndrome tends to be a lifelong problem. True or false? Depression in children frequently presents as an irritable rather than a depressed mood. The answer is true. What are the three leading causes of death in adolescence? Accidents, homicide, and suicide together account for about 75% of teenage deaths. What is the most commonly abused illicit drug? Describe its effects on users. Marijuana. Watch for a teenager who is withdrawn and shows a decline in school performance. Other symptoms include a motivational syndrome. Chronic use can result in laziness and lack of motivation time distortion, impaired judgment, conjunctival injection, paranoia, and the so-called munchies, which is eating binges during intoxication. No physical symptoms have been reported for withdrawal, but psychologic cravings may be present. Marijuana is not dangerous in overdose. Although patients may experience temporary dysphoria and is a controversial teratogen, the evidence is weak. What symptoms are associated with cocaine intoxication? How about cocaine withdrawal? Cocaine causes sympathetic stimulation such as insomnia, tachycardia, midriasis, hypertension, and sweating, along with hyperalertness and possible paranoia, aggressiveness, delirium, psychosis, or formication. So-called cocaine bugs. Patients think that bugs are crawling on them. Overdose can be fatal as a result of arrhythmia, myocardial infarction, seizure, or stroke. Cocaine withdrawal is not dangerous, but psychologic cravings are usually severe. Cocaine is teratogenic, causing vascular disruptions in the fetus. Describe the symptoms of amphetamine intoxication. Amphetamines are longer-acting and associated, more commonly, with psychotic symptoms. Patients may appear to be full-blown schizophrenics, but basically their effects are similar to those of cocaine. 
Describe the effects of opioids. What symptoms are seen in withdrawal? Heroin and other opioids cause euphoria, analgesia, drowsiness, meiosis, constipation, and CNS depression. Overdoses can be fatal because of respiratory depression, which should be treated with naloxone. Because the drug is often taken intravenously, associated morbidity and mortality includes endocarditis, HIV infection, hepatitis, cellulitis, and talc damage. Withdrawal is not life-threatening, but patients act as though they are going to die. Symptoms of withdrawal include piloerection, diarrhea, insomnia, abdominal cramping, and pain. Methadone or buprenorphine can be used to reduce acute withdrawal symptoms. How do you recognize intoxication with LSD or hallucinogenic mushrooms? Symptoms of intoxication with LSD or mushrooms include hallucinations, usually visual as opposed to auditory in schizophrenia, midriasis, tachycardia, hypertension, diaphoresis, and perception and mood disturbances. No withdrawal symptoms or teratogenic effects have been reported. Users may experience flashbacks, which are brief feelings of being on the drug again, even though none was taken. This can occur months to years later, or they can have a bad trip, an acute panic reaction or dysphoria, which should be treated with reassurance or a benzodiazepine or antipsychotic if needed. What about PCP intoxication? PCP intoxication causes LSD or mushroom symptoms plus confusion, agitation, and aggressive behavior. Also, look for vertical and or horizontal nystagmus. Possible schizophrenic-like symptoms such as paranoia, auditory hallucinations, and disorganized behavior and speech. Overdose can be fatal because of convulsions, coma, and respiratory arrest. Treat with supportive care and urine acidification to hasten elimination. No withdrawal symptoms have been reported. Describe the signs and symptoms of inhalant intoxication. Who is likely to abuse inhalants? Inhalant intoxication such as gasoline, glue, or varnish remover causes rapid euphoria, dizziness, slurred speech, a feeling of floating, ataxia, and a sense of heightened power. Is usually seen in younger teenagers, 11 to 15 years old, because these substances are cheap, legal to buy, and readily available. Inhalants can be fatal in overdose as a result of respiratory depression, cardiac arrhythmias, or asphyxiation and may cause severe permanent sequelae of the CNS, liver, or kidney in peripheral neuropathy. True or false? Benzodiazepines and barbiturates can be fatal in overdose, but not in withdrawal. False. Both can be fatal in overdose and withdrawal. Describe the signs and symptoms of benzodiazepine or barbiturate intoxication. Benzodiazepines and barbiturates cause sedation and drowsiness, as well as disinhibition and reduced anxiety. They could be fatal in overdose as a result of respiratory depression. Treat acute overdoses of a benzodiazepine with flumazenil, although this may precipitate seizures. In withdrawal, death may result from seizures and or cardiovascular collapse. Benzodiazepines and barbiturates are especially dangerous when mixed with alcohol because all three are CNS depressants. What are the symptoms of caffeine withdrawal? The answer is headaches and fatigues. What is the basic rule of thumb about the difference in symptoms between intoxication and withdrawal for the same drug? The symptoms are usually the opposite of each other. For example, stimulants like cocaine and amphetamines cause insomnia with intoxication and hypersomnolence in withdrawal whereas depressants such as alcohol, benzodiazepines, and barbiturates cause sedation with intoxication and insomnia in withdrawal.